So I've been using the Razer V2 Chroma for about a year now. So it's only natural that I put a video out letting you know what I think of the controller, durability, longevity, all that good stuff. And what I think about it overall for the controller and is it still worth anywhere from, well, I've seen it on sale for $100 all the way over to $150 in 2022, the end of 2022. Is it a good present to buy for somebody or something like that? I'll let you know in today's video. Let's hop into it. So first things first is I'm not doing a full review on this controller. If you want to see that full review, go to the description below. I'll link a video down there for the full review. But just an overview of the controller, this thing has six extra buttons, two on top between the uh, triggers and the bumpers, and then four underneath. They're buttons, but they're placed in the middle of the controller. This controller also has trigger locks on. They have uh, on and off, so you can use those sweating in Modern Warfare 2 like I am doing right here, right now. Now, for you guys that didn't know, this is a wired controller. It's not wireless. It's, they do have a new V2 Chroma coming out Pro for the PlayStation version. That will be wireless, but it's also going to have a hefty price tag of like $250. Let me know in the comments below, would you want to see me review that controller? If I get enough comments, maybe I'll buy it to review it. The X, Y, B, and A are tactile buttons. I love the idea of tactile buttons for the X, Y, B, and A. The only thing is, I don't use the XYBNA very, very often. I used it for a couple games just to say I used them, but for the most part, I stuck with the underneath buttons, the six extra buttons that come with the controller so I don't take my fingers off the joysticks when I'm sweating playing Modern Warfare 2, or before this, unfortunately, Warzone. Good idea, just, well, they could've probably put the money elsewhere, personally. There's a USB-C on the top of the controller where you plug it in at. I, this was one of my gripes with this controller, not the USB-C part, I think that's amazing, but it was just kinda how it was in there, just loosey-goosey and all that. Thought for $150 at the time when I bought the controller, they could've done a better job, kinda like how A does with their uh, charging cables or their, their cables for their controller. It has a little cradle it locks into where you don't move it around. That flex plate, the USB-C flex plate, doesn't flex so much. Now, when it came to comfort of the controller, this controller was a little fatter than your normal, typical Xbox controller. So I do understand for some people, they didn't like this about the controller. Me, on the other hand, I have huge, gigantic hands, so it didn't bother me at all. I was able to get used to it pretty quick. It was pretty comfortable to me. If I'm to be 100%, I do feel like a normal Xbox controller is a little bit more dynamic in comfort, in my personal opinion but I have no issues with the comfort of this controller. Now, durability on this controller, I've used it, like I said, mostly throughout the year. It was my go-to controller, and I had no issues with it except for one. I had one of the M4, I think it was the M4 button on the back of the controller was starting to give out. Now, this could be either one or two things. You can look at this as a con, or you can look at this as a pro. I, the reason why I say a pro is because, well, I was gonna make this video anyway, so, why not check out the warranty on the controller? It was literally within two weeks of the warranty being up because it comes with a one year warranty. So I reached out to Razer after jumping through many hoops as you usually have to. They decided to for me to send the controller back to them. I had two options, standard return, which is I'll send the controller to them. They will look at it. If they deem it, you know, manufacturer issue, they will send me a new controller out. Or I can do the advanced option where I would pay the RS, uh, the RS MSRP on the controller, and then they will send me a controller out. Once that controller gets here, I send my old controller back. Once they receive the controller, realize, see that it's a manufacturer issue, they will refund my money. Since I do reviews on controllers and I have just a few laying around, I decided to do the standard option. And Lord behold, they got the controller. They sent me another controller out. This was all done within like two, two and a half week process. I had my new refurbished controller in my hands. Now, the warranty process was a pretty good in my personal opinion. I have no issues with it. The controller I sent off had a little bit of stick drift with it. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't not, not noticeable either. After a year of use and never cleaning it or anything, I had this issue. Now, I am gonna be coming out with a video soon on how to clean your tensionometers to maybe get rid of stick drift for just wear, and, not wear and tear, but for just dirt and um, gunk and stuff in it. There's a way you can do it. It has a, like a chemical you can actually spray into the controller and it won't mess it up. Be on the lookout for that video. But I wanted to make sure I got a controller back that had 
less are equal to stick drift. Now, let me know in the comments below if you think you should have zero stick drift. I mean, in my personal opinion, I throw that up in the air. I had a year old controller and I got back controller with less stick drift than on what I sent off. And it had just a little bit of stick drift, but not very much at all, very minuscule. Uh, not noticeable at all. So I consider that a win in my book. The last question you have for me is, is this controller worth buying in 2022? Or if you're watching this at the beginning of 2023 or whatever, is the controller still worth buying? It, this controller I've seen on sale brand new for $100 a few times now. So I think you can get this for under 150 bucks. The controller, in my personal opinion, is still in good value for 150 bucks just because I had, like I said, I only had one issue with it. It got fixed, it got so situated. Customer service with Razer has always been good to me, better than other companies. I'm not gonna mention them. So yes, buy this controller if you're looking for a pro controller. But if you're not into wires on your controller and you have a Series S or Series X controller, then I highly recommend checking out the video I just did here when a pro attachment, it goes on your existing controller and turns it into a pro controller and it has gyroscope on it. Oh yeah, and it's under $100. And remember guys, a gesture of kindness can change someone's life. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace and love.